It's got to be Valentine. Better be. You want me to get it? Please. We made good time. Yes, sir. Luckily, we had a tailwind all the way from Washington. Well, what have you heard? We have 48 hours in which to give up the microfilm. And if we don't, they're going to kill my wife. Are you going to give it up? I understand this, Valentine. You're dealing with killers here. I am well aware of that. Good. And think about this. We have half an equation. They have the disc. Now, what does that tell you? Well, in time, they can analyze the disc. So what's the point in holding out? Policy. I'll give you policy. Policy is that we have half an equation, they have the disc. There's your policy. And they are holding the hostages. And they're going to be dead in 48 hours. Tell me, how in the name of common sense can you stand there and say we won't give in? But well, we're not giving in. These people are terrorists. The United States cannot give in to terrorist demands. All right, all right, then what can we do? Uh, as Robert said, we have already gone over this persimmon clue and it got us absolutely nowhere. Mm. Well, either we can get the disc or we can get back the other half of the equation. How? By prayer? I don't know how, Robert. But I do know that Professor Gerald developed this disc for the United States and by God, we are going to have it. You're a dreamer. We don't have it. We may never have it. But I'll give you a few facts here. We don't even have a plan. We don't even know where they hold up. Well, then we just keep on working. You stand there smugly and say, we'll keep on working. And in 48 hours' time, if we don't come up with that microfilm, my wife is going to die. Look, I'm sure you must have a plan. Now, since you don't want us to give in to their demands, what is it you do want us to do? Well, first, we deepen our coverage of the exposition. And then we, uh, we take the time to pick up clues, put them together, and try to figure out just exactly where they are. And how long is all this going to take? A week, a month, a year? We have 48 hours and they're running out. You know, Robert, if you were still my agent, I might be uh, a little worried about you. However, under the circumstances, I understand your personal concern. My concern. My concern. They're going to wait 48 hours, kill them, and then take off. And you want to run around like Ellery Queen and look for clues. And I am telling you that they won't leave without the microfilm. Hell, they won't. They don't need it. They've got the disc. I think Robert has a point there. Well, you better think again, Connie. Yes, they do have the disc. But to take it apart and understand the second half, that's going to take time. That's time consuming. They would much rather have the microfilm so that they can duplicate the disc faster. Have you considered another course of action on this? <sighs> Please name it. Why not give them the other half of the equation? That way, we can nail them when they're trying to leave with it. Now what do we do? Body search everyone coming out of the expo grounds? Why would we bother to do that? I mean, we know who they are. There's Grant, there's Gregory, probably Rama, since the Gulistanis won't allow us into their pavilion. <laughs> You're forgetting several pavilions that have denied us entrance. And you don't have any real proof that Rama's involved. As a matter of fact, you don't really know, outside of Grant and Gregory, whether there might not be a whole bunch of people involved in this thing. Who's that woman? Who, that woman, who was she? Well, I figured that maybe you could answer that. I mean, you'd be in the WSB and all, plugged into all these computers. Don't you know who's involved? Yes, yes, we have some information. Well, such as? Well, we know about Natalie. She's dead. There's a spirited observation. We also know about Yuri Ivanovich. Weren't you connected with him, Robert, back when you were still with us? Yeah, we mixed it once in Marrakesh. He's in on this caper? Oh, yes, he started it. And he's been ordered back to the motherland, I've been informed, to bask in the glory of having pulled this off. He hasn't pulled it off yet. Well, they will if we don't move in. All I can do is to repeat that if we give them the microfilm, then they can walk out right under our noses and we cannot accede to their demands. <sighs> Look, Robert, for all it's worth, I am uh, really able to identify with your personal concern, and I am genuinely sorry. However, under the circumstances, there is absolutely nothing I can do to help you. I'm sorry. I'll get back to both of you later. Sorry. 
You know what's going to happen here, don't you? We're going to sit around and play jacks. Well, the DVX run out and kill my wife. Either that or the disc blows up first. I... Disc blowing up. Did you hear me say that? Well, we always knew the disc could blow up. Yeah. But the DVX don't know it. No, they don't. It could go up at any time. You know we'll be the first to go? My wife! This could explode at any second, and the DVX doesn't even know they're sitting on a time bomb. How could I have forgotten? It was always Gerald's chief concern. I think we get Ballantyne back in here, and we remind him of that. Now, surely he's going to give in to their demands when he remembers that. Come on, Connie. You know, Ballantyne, once he's made up his mind, he'll never change it. Even if there are, there are thousands of human lives at stake here? He doesn't want the public to know, period. You know... He's my boss, and all of that, and Lord knows I admire the man. But sometimes, sometimes I just don't understand his reasoning. Well, it's pretty obvious. He doesn't want the embarrassment of the public knowing that the U.S. blew it. You mean to say he didn't endanger human lives just, to, just so he doesn't have to risk embarrassment? Oh, he'd have a rationale, but that's about all it amounts to. Just because it's his attitude doesn't necessarily mean that it's mine. I was said, no, I don't understand. You can't go against his orders. No, 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 no. You can't go against his orders because you're one of his agents now. Me? <laughs> I'm not. And I happen to believe that certain people in this world are above politics. So do I. And it's clear. I call the DVX and let them know the disc could explode. Now, wait a second. That could lead to exactly what Ballantyne is most concerned about. There'd be a public leak, and, there, and then there'd be a public panic. I can prevent that. How? By telling the DVX, correction, by telling him how not to make it explode. Telling him? Who him? Ivanovich. You heard Ballantyne say that he initiated this cape. Well, I also heard him say that he's back in the motherland. No problem. I can uh, get his direct home line from my computer. You're going to call Ivanovich yourself? Right now. Mm -hmm.